And now I have the pleasure to introduce the voice of the legend singers from the 70s and 80s, Mr. Bob and Tom. <laughs> uh, you know, when you're married, you can always blame your spouse when things go wrong. And uh, I guess we're all kind of frequent uh, do that kind of thing. Um, and I guess I've done it to Celia a few times. Or maybe more than a few times. But every once in a while, she does something right. And here's the story. It was in 1967. We hadn't been at Boyle very long. Celia was working at the Courier Journal. Now, you may recall in those days, and I think a lot of people know this by now, that WHAS was also in the Courier Journal building. It just so happens that the paths of Dave Jones and Celia McDonald happened to cross in the spring of 1967. Now, I don't know how the conversation went, but knowing Dave Jones, I'm sure he couldn't resist an opportunity to plug an upcoming concert. That's how we learned about the Motet Singers. We went to hear them sing, I guess, that following weekend. That fall, we became members. And we have, for the next 30 years, give or take a few years, enjoyed being members of the Motet Singers. During those early years, the late 70s, uh, late 60s and early 70s, were times uh, I would describe as times of transition. Um, many of the singers, and you probably heard this from some of the other folks, who had been teenagers, high school students, were coming back as college graduates. Of course, the one famous person that we all remember who came back was Diane Sawyer. But uh, I recall many interesting stories and adventures about those times of transition. I had uh, several bus drivers, including the multitude of Greyhound bus drivers as we were traveling along. But when Celia and I first came into the group, there was the ever popular Garnage Roy. Yes. Garnage Roy, the man who invented the thrill ride. <laughs> Garnage Roy, the man who, of course, I think he may have had this patented. It was the famous ride in the night to the cornfield. <laughs> now, of course, there was the other interesting adventure that we had because I think Garnet really had a unique ability to either read the map, I'll be here, correctly, or to find the best possible shortcut. <laughs> I remember somewhere in the countryside of Ohio, as we approached a bridge, the bus came to a stop. All the Motet singers got out and crossed the bridge on foot. <laughs> the road limit on the bridge was considerably less than the weight of the singers, the instruments, the luggage, and the bus. After we crossed the bridge, Garnet did his famous imitation of a dragster driver. <laughs> well, as far as I know, the bridge is still there, and so are we. And then we come to the period known as the Ozzy Jones period. <laughs> Ozzy was one of our greatest fans, folks. How many times have we been in concert in a church? And look at the back pew of that church. And there was Ozzy, grinning from ear to ear. And I thought, what does this man look like? And being a father, I could only come up with this conclusion. Ozzy looked like the proud parent of a kid at a school. <laughs> He had that expression on his face. Of course, the other thing about Ozzy was uh, he often told us that he was somehow related to Dave Jones. <laughs> we haven't figured that out yet. But the friends of the fellowship that we've had for years will last us for a lifetime, our own best singers. One of my 
favorite movies. I just saw it on, I go on TV. It's called Mr. Holland's Oats. You may be familiar with that. It's a great story about a man who taught music in public schools for 30 years. Like all of us, he makes mistakes. Like all of us, he has problems. But he did things right. He knew the value of music. He knew the value of the arts in the lives of the students, which is something that Sylvia and I feel very strongly about. Budget cuts come as they will, and what goes first, the arts. Mr. Holland loses his job, but a surprise event in his honor is held in the school of court with many fallen and present students on hand. Mr. Holland is asked at one point before he conducts his opus that he's worked on for a lot of time to look around the room. He's told these are the people whose lives you have touched. These are the people who love you for what you have done. Dave Jones, my friend, where you are back there behind the lights. These are the people whose lives you have touched. These are the people who love you very much. God bless you.